Hello guys, it's Benny, again. I know you're probably tired of seeing my stupid face all the time, but Svetlana's currently busy at building her costume from Horizon Zero Dawn. We'll upload some videos of that as soon as we're getting some progress done, so stay tuned. Last time I got a ton of feedback from you asking me to do a video tutorial on how I 3D modeled the pipe revolver pistol from Fallout in Fusion 360. So here it is, I hope you're happy. As you know, it was the first time I actually 3D model a prop like this myself, so I don't claim to be in any position to teach you anything. And to be honest, most of the time I have no idea what I'm doing. But you wanted it, so here we are. Also, today is a very special day, because Svetlana didn't force me to do advertising for our books. <laughs> oh man, really? You know what, let's just get this over with. Here we go! To use Fusion 360 for free, just click on the free trial tab on their website, download the app and register as a free hobbyist. When you boot up the app, this is how it looks like. On the top, you have all of your tools for drawing sketches, as well as those for creating all the 3D stuff. There's also more up there, but we don't care about those for now. On the right you have your camera controls. You can drag the cube to move your camera, or click on a side to get a certain view. At the bottom is your history, where you can undo and edit all your previous work steps. And on the left there's a list of all the things you'll create, like sketches and 3D bodies. So, I started by placing a reference picture that I found on Google. Do this by clicking on Insert and Canvas. Oh, by the way, if you don't move your mouse, Fusion will always tell you what it wants you to do next. Now, for example, it wants me to select the plane to put my image on. I went with the ground plane, but any other would have worked too. Then I selected the image and pressed Enter. If your image is as small as mine, there's an option to scale it too. You can also set the opacity of your image and click on Display Through. This way you will always be able to see your image even if you put some 3D objects on top of it. And last but not least, I right-clicked on my canvas image and selected Calibrate. Here you can choose two reference points and tell Fusion exactly how long this distance needs to be. This will determine the scale of your prop, so think about what you put in. My gun was supposed to be 32 centimeters, so that's what I entered. And now the fun begins. The way Fusion works is pretty similar to how you would create a prop in real life. You start with a blueprint, cut the pieces out and transfer them to your material. It's pretty much the same here. First, let's create the sketch. I selected my ground plane and started by drawing a ton of squares. My goal was to trace all the individual shapes of my reference. For this you can use all kinds of lines, rectangles, circles and splines. Press T on your keyboard to trim unnecessary lines and use the fillet option to round edges. Don't worry too much if you make mistakes, you can always go back in and move all the points later. The spline tool is great to get round shapes like those I used for my handle. Just follow the basic outline first and then go back in and grab those little green dots to fine tune your corners. Use and combine all the available tools until you completely traced your prop. Since I'm already experienced with drawing shapes in Illustrator, this step was pretty easy for me. My recordings show that I took around 15 minutes for this work step. If you're doing this the first time though, it's completely normal that you take longer, so don't worry. Now comes the interesting part, turning this sketch into a 3D model. Just like when you build a real prop, I recommend looking at your reference pictures first and thinking about how thick you want your individual pieces to be. Now let's go to the Create section and click on Extrude. Using this tool you can select parts of your sketch and drag them out into a 3D shape. You have to choose in which direction you want to drag your shape. I chose Symmetry to get the same thickness on both sides. Now I typed in how thick I want my piece to be. You can totally just experiment with the shapes, since you can always change them later. In general, everything you do in Fusion can be changed later again, so it's really easy to try things out. I constantly looked at my reference pictures to get a better idea of my parts. You can press Shift to select several sketch shapes and bring them all out at the same time. You can also choose if you want your new shape to connect to your other ones, subtract from them or just want to create a new body. And don't worry, you can change all that later as well. Ok, let's fast forward a bit since I'm just creating a lot of boxes for now. So 
So far so good, let's head over to the pipes now. For those we're going to need a circle sketch, since we're not getting any further with our boxes here. If you right click on the face of another body, you can actually create a new sketch on top of it. I selected the inside of my rail and created a circle sketch on it to extrude the pipe from. Now I just had to drag it out and create an even smaller one on top for the tip of the pipe. In case you want to create a thicker piece in the middle of your pipe, you can also just offset your 3D shape from the sketch. To get the hollow barrel and the small pipe that holds the cylinder, I just repeated the same steps. Creating the full cylinder was a little bit more complicated though. First I drew the main shape with a big circle. Since the bullets had to fit through the barrel, I also made a new sketch that was smaller. Then I used the circular pattern command to tell Fusion I wanted six of those around my center. Now that's a pretty good sketch to work with for this cylinder. Oh yeah, the hole in the middle also had to be a bit bigger, so I could slide it on the other pipe later. So let's select all the shapes we need and extrude this baby. I also did the same for the bullets, but a little bit shorter, so they look sunken in. To make them round at the front, I selected all the inner circles and then used the fillet command. Is that how you say it? Fillet? Fil fillet? Isn't that a steak? Ugh. You can pull on the arrow or type in a custom radius using the fillet command to round your edges. Already looks more like bullets, right? Let's also create a similar effect on the back of the bullets using another command with a weird name, the chamfer. But hey, the main body is done. Time for additional details and some fine tuning. A really easy trick to make your cubes look better is to select their edges and then use the fillet command to soften them up. I created the screws on the main body by extruding their circle drawing with an offset and then fillet filletening them up as well. For the cross slot on the bigger screws, I drew in an additional shape on top, which I then cut out. Now over to the sides. I drew an oval, combined it with a rectangle and cut both of these pieces out at the right position. I just had to make sure the rear side lined up with the front side. Those weird dents on the cylinder proved to be a little bit more complicated. If you need to create a sketch suspended in mid-air, Use the Offset Plane command to offset a new drawing plane from any point or body you want. I used my new plane to create a sketch that I could then cut out of my cylinder. Yeah, this should work. Let's make it a new body and work over it with some more creative fillets. Just like I did earlier with the sketches, I used a circular pattern to create multiple copies of the body around the cylinder. And this worked awesome! I went back in and changed the shape of my piece a bit, and then clicked on the Combine command. You can use it not only to combine bodies, but also to subtract them from another. Cut and done! Next I made the clamp using the same techniques I already explained, so let's fast forward again. What follows now is the most fun part of modeling, applying chamfers and fillets to all the edges to make them pretty. I also decided to edit the back of my bullets a bit more, since I didn't really like how they looked. And by the way, the fillet command also works on edges that connect to pieces. Adding a radius here will make them look fused together, which is a pretty cool effect. Let's fast forward again through all the pretty making. To create the big screws at the back, I created a polygon sketch with six sides and then cut it out of the cube I made earlier. I applied another chamfer to the edges and after that it was done. The screw in the middle was also deleted and replaced with an extruded six-side polygon. 
some additional screws on top and the only thing missing was this little clip on the side. I made another offset sketching plane and drew on the outline for the clip based on what I could make out in my blurry reference picture. Another screw on top to attach the clip and my 3D model was finally done. All in all it took me around 3 hours to create the entire 3D model. This was a really long video, so thanks to everybody who made it this far. You really must have nothing better to do. If you haven't seen it yet, click here to watch the video of how I 3D printed and painted the final prop. I learned pretty much all I know about Fusion 360 from the Chaos Cortex YouTube channel, so go check it out if you want to dive deeper into 3D modeling. My finished prop also arrived safely into the hands of our giveaway winner Cassidy. Thanks again for supporting us on Patreon. As always, click here to follow our channel or leave me a comment below if you have more questions. Thanks again and auf Wiedersehen!